Welcome to Jazzdime. Jazzdime.com is an online store that buys, sells, trades authentic luxury watches. We make these videos so our customers can easily choose the best watch for themselves in the comfort of their own home. If you like this watch and would like to purchase it at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at Jazzdime.com. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona reference 126508 in yellow gold with a golden dial and black subdials. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the history, then tell you about where this watch stands in the lineup. Then I'm going to go through the case bezel dial bracelet movement, finally try it on and give you my thoughts. So let's start. With the history, the Daytona has been around for a very long time. The first Daytona came out in the early 60s, and now it's 2024, so that makes it approximately 60 years that this watch has been out. Quite a long time, and it's actually Rolex's most iconic and most prestigious and hardest to get of their watches. They make many different sports lines. This watch is in their professional line, AKA sports line, and they make a sports line and a dress line, also known as professional and uh, classic, I guess it would be, or the day just line. The professional line is comprises many different models, the Submariner, the GMT, the Yachtmaster, the Daytona, Deep Sea, et cetera, et cetera. The Daytona is the most complicated of, of all of them. It's the most pricey. It has the most var variations. It's the most iconic, so on and so forth. And so there you have it. It's pretty much the best one that they have. Okay, so and uh, how they came up with the name, the watch is a chronograph. It's always been a chronograph. That means it has these three little subdials that calculate elapsed time. And those that elapsed time, uh, Rolex decided to pair that with motor racing. And so, uh, so they have. And the Daytona, when they were trying to figure out the name, they were Rolex was thinking, should they call it Le Mans, which is a European race, or Daytona, which is an American race? And they decided ultimately, since America was their largest market, to call it the Daytona. And wisely uh, so, because after all this time, you see it is their most iconic line. It's really what uh, people think of when they think of a sports watch from Rolex, at least most people, or at least some people, okay? And uh, rightfully so, it's very beautifully laid out, and we're gonna go through it in a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit about the history. Now let's talk about where the, where does this watch stand in the lineup of other Daytonas? Well, in 2023, Rolex redesigned the Daytona after about 10 years of the old reference. The old reference was a 116508, this is a 126508. It only differs by one digit, but there are some differences, which I'm going to go through when I tell you about each part. But where my, the, the topic we're on right now is where does this watch stand in the lineup? Well, the Daytona is made in many variations. They make it steel, steel and gold, rose gold, yellow gold, white gold, platinum, and they make it on different bracelets, oyster, flex, rubber, uh, and they make it with different bezels different color uh, dial variations. So they have a ton of different variations. I want to say something like 50 different variations. It's the most of any sports watch that they make. So this one in particular that you are looking at right here is in all yellow gold, the entire watch, every single part of it. And this one there, at, at least as of 2024, there's several variations of it. Not a lot. I suspect over time they'll do even more variations of it. Right now there's they have a black dial, a champagne dial, white dial, black diamond dial. They also make this champagne with subdials that are completely filled in. What you have here is subdials with with a black on the trim of the subdial, but not black into not the entire subdial being black. They also make one, as I just said, with an all black subdial, and and um, they have the reverse of this where the where the back is black and the subdials are gold. So a lot of different variations of it. I suspect over time they'll probably do some more, but who knows? At least as of now, they have six variations of it. Okay, now if you want this one on rubber, they also have it on rubber, but then they change the bracelet to ceramic. But at any rate, this is sort of the medium uh, in the mid-tier, mid to high tier when it comes to Daytona. They make even more expensive Daytonas, which comes out to the plant. Actually, I would say on the high tier. Not the highest, but high, because... They do make a Platinum Daytona that's even more expensive than this, but this one is pretty darn high. So if you've gotten to this level of watch, you've gotten pretty darn high. It's, it's not the highest, but it is very high, okay? All right, that's where this watch stands in the lineup. Now let's talk about the case. The case itself is, as I just said, 
Yellow Gold it is 40 millimeters. Now Daytona has always been 40 millimeters and probably always will stay 40 millimeters. It's a single block of gold with a screw down case back and winding crown that keeps it from uh, keeps it watertight. And it's actually just made out of a single piece of gold. You can't you can't imagine. I mean, at least the case, the head, the case of it is made out of a single piece of gold. Okay, and 40 millimeters. And if you turn it on its side, you can look at the profile. It's approximately 12 millimeters thick, which is not very thick at all considering that this is a chronograph and, and it calculates all this extra stuff, which is elapsed time. Um, and it's a, it's a complicated watch. Not the most complicated that they make, but it is one of their most complicated sports watch that they make. All right. Okay, so that, that is the case. Now let's move on. And that has not changed, by the way, between the old model and the new model. Now let's talk about the bezel. The bezel is a, is a tacky metric scale, which uh, it has these cool little numbers, to be honest, you would probably 99% of people probably would never use this. It's uh, to calculate elapsed time, and uh, we have it in our other videos on how to do that. But basically, it's just for looks. And the old bezel actually looks the same as the new bezel. The only difference is if it were ceramic, then it looks a little different. But on the the full metal uh, bezels, they all look the same, as as in it looked the same as the previous generation. So that also has not changed. Okay, and it's made of gold. Now, let's talk about the dial. This part is the part that has changed, okay? The, the dial on this has changed, and it, it if you look at the dial, first of all, they never had this configuration. Second of all, uh, configuration meaning this golden dial, okay? They call it champagne before, now they call it golden. I think the golden looks a little bit different. It looks more golden as opposed to champagne, which is what it used to be, all right? And the sub-dials here are thinner, this this black ring around it is thinner than it, than than the previous generation, and it, which makes the watch look more streamlined. And the hour markers here are longer and skinnier. Before they were shorter and fatter, and I believe that it makes the watch look more streamlined. And this was a racing watch, hence the name Daytona. So a streamlined looked look makes sense. Okay, that that is the dial. All right, let's move on to the bracelet. The bracelet also has not changed. It, it's just a sim simply a oyster bracelet. They also make it in a rubber bracelet, but then it changes the bezel to uh, ceramic. The oyster bracelet here is a beautiful bracelet. It's always been the same. Not a whole lot to say about it. I mean, it's it's already done to perfection. It has an easy link cover extension on it. Okay. And uh, I forgot to mention on the dial, if you shine this light at it, you'll actually have a, a long-lasting blue luminescent and uh it's very legible at night which is which is a good thing presumably you would be wearing a sports watch because th this is a sports watch you'd be wearing it at night as well and that you can tell the time at night okay now uh let's move on to the movement here now the movement is changed from the previous generation the old movement it was a 4130 movement this is a 4131 movement you can't see it but the difference being that the the uh, I think there's a lot of internally small things that are different. I'm not a watchmaker, so I don't know all the little details. But basically, newer is better. They come up with a new engine for this watch, the 4131, which is superior to the old one. In what exact way, I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter. The point is that it is better, and it's the latest and greatest that Rolex has to offer. So there you have it. Okay, look, let's try this watch on my wrist and let you know what I think. What I think about this watch, I've kind of said it along, all along, is that the Daytona is Rolex's best watch. It's their best seller. And it's also my favorite, personal favorite. I think it looks the most sporty, the most manly, the most complicated, the most everything. And it's the most expensive too. And the most variations. I just really like the Daytona. Now, up to which variation do you like? Well, that's kind of up to you. Uh, I'll make a case for why this is a very good variation is that this golden dial blends in with the rest of it very well. Now, with the black subdials, it also looks quite sharp because it... it as a little a hint of color the old golden dial was not that great it didn't have these beautiful black ringed sub dials they were just completely flat and actually to be honest it didn't do very well I, I know because we sold that watch you know not that many times but the ones the this dial with this black ring around it it looks much better it adds a hint of color to it, it kind of matches the bezel and it just looks uh, it just, it, I think it looks more refined than the previous generation, right? And I know they have a black subdial one, but 
that one gets a little bit too sporty. So with this just black sub dial on the ring, it also looks pretty, pretty nice. Okay, look, anyways, if you want to buy this watch at the lowest price anywhere online, click on the link in the description below to buy it at jazztime.com. If you want to find out more about the watch you just saw in the video, you can just click below on show more to see the full description. Then you can check the link next to model as seen in video, click on it and you will get to the proper page where you can see all the details. If you're watching on a mobile phone, you have to click on the arrow down on the right hand side below the video to see the full description. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to share this video with your friends, you can use the share button below and share it on any platform you like. If you have questions, constructive feedback, want to tell us about some mistakes or misspeaks, just write a comment below. If you want to see more videos like this, you should subscribe to our channel and visit our channel page where you can find all the videos. And if you're interested in a specific watch brand, you can check out our playlists. If you want to check the price for a watch or want to buy one, remember at jazztime.com you always get a steep discount, so you should check the prices with us. If you want to know the price for a specific watch, just go to Google, type in jazztime plus the brand, model and the details you're interested in and Google will find the right page for you. Thank you for watching.